equipment. <clears throat> okay, so what is this? What does this sound remind you of? Christmas! <laughs> so this is, uh, this is my Christmas message for this year, seeing how I probably won't be <laughs> sharing a Christmas message other than this. So turn with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter... One, chapter one, and we want to look at verse 18. <clears throat> now, some of the, what I'm going to begin to share here at the first, I have shared somewhat, a little bit, I'm sure, at various and sundry times, and um, but I'm leading into something beyond that. Uh, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Okay. And uh, so this is the, you know, Christmas, birth of Jesus. Um, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the little baby Jesus, sweet little baby Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> and um, so I, I think we'll just read a little further, but instead of down, we're going to go back to verse 1. <clears throat> Matthew 1.1, 1, 1. the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. All right, so this is clearly not just talking about generations of people. Amen? This is going to be a genealogy that is seen not as a genealogy, but as a generation of Jesus Christ. A generation of Jesus Christ, even though it's spread over what we would call many generations. <clears throat> The book of generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren, and Judas begat Phares and Zerah of Thamar, and Phares begat Esram, and Esram begat Aram, and Aram begat Amenadab, and Amenadab begat Nason, and Nason begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rachab, and, or Rachel, I mean, of uh, Rahab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed uh, begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Uriah, and Solomon begat Rehoboam, and Rehoboam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa, and Asa begat Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias, and you know, some of you can read better than me. I read half of this. I think I'll let somebody else read all these names. Just take a quick look over them. Never mind. Um, and all of these names going all the way down to verse 15. And uh, Elihud begat Eliezer, and Eliezer begat Methan, and Methan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Um, this is, as I said, the generation of Jesus Christ. This is uh, not their generation. Um, is that me? It is. I'm not dead yet. Um, and it's not just a pr their present generation, because that's the way we think. We think of, um, you know, well, in my generation, we're, you know, we're different. You know, we were the hippie generation, or we were the, the punk rock generation, or we were this or that. 
you know, uh, when Greg came here, he had been of the punk rock generation, and I was of the hippie, which is totally, totally different in every way. Looks and dress and talk and all that kind of stuff. But we were of the generation of Jesus Christ. And because of that, there was absolutely no conflict because we were not touting our generation. Um, and each one of the people that are in this list going down, all of the ones that are there, they each one exists because of, of him, of Jesus. They only exist because of him. Each one is mentioned just because Jesus came forth, because Jesus came forth. That's the reason why they're mentioned. And I know people that read the, read the genealogy, they read all that right there that we read and more, and they go, well, this is stupid. Why is this in here? And there's no, you know, I don't see, you know, I don't see Jesus in that or da-da-da-da. But, you know, it's, the problem isn't a genealogy. The problem is our heart is not attuned to the generation of Jesus Christ. We're in Matthew 1, 1, and that's what I'm referring to. And um, um, we're not attuned to him in that sense. We're more attuned to our existence and our life and that sort of thing. And so what we see is all these people are along this line, and they're all important to bringing forth Christ. Amen? They're all important to bringing forth Christ. If one of them had died and pulled them out of there or something like that, the rest of the generation would have died too. Right? Because they're all in line here. And Jesus never would have come forth. Never. Okay. So they're important, but they're important for one main reason. For Jesus to come forth. That's why they exist. And... Um, and uh, if there was a person who had no part in that genealogy, they had no, their name is not there because they're not bringing forth Christ. They're not part of that which is bringing forth Christ. So they're not mentioned. They're not mentioned. And there were plenty of people's names who could have been mentioned. But it's only those who are there to bring forth Christ. And that's what they, again, that's what they exist for. That's their purpose. It doesn't say, it doesn't give us a little blurb on each and every one of them and says, and this one did this and this one did that, you know. Didn't go there. It doesn't go there. The Lord doesn't go there. The Father doesn't go there. The Father is looking for his son and he's looking for his son in us. So, in that sense, you can say that they represent a picture of the body of Christ. Amen. Picture the body of Christ. Um, we talk about the body of Christ functioning. Amen? Talk a lot about that. Um, most churches do, I guess, on some front. The body of Christ functioning. And, you know, we want everybody to do something. Amen? We want everybody to function. No one be idle. No one be idle. And yet, um, you know, what is... What is the nature of Christ doing in a person is what's important. I mean, he may be, you, you look at Jesus and he's standing before Pilate and it would think, you would think that the one time he needs to speak up is then. And he just, like a sheep before his shearer is dumb, he opens not his mouth, you see. As long as it's Christ, see. But we think there are issues outside of him that are important even if they're scriptural. And we think that's important without Jesus. We think that, that it's us, that we need to become important on some front. And, well, from the genealogy, we see uh, that God's heart, God's plan is Christ in you. It's not God's plan is Christian or Christian service or Christian functioning. But the father says, where is my son? Where is my son? And that's what he wants brought forth. So 
Um, so you get the, you know, you get the functioning over in 1 Corinthians 12. Anybody familiar with 1 Corinthians 12? Yeah, 1 Corinthians 12 is all about functioning, okay? So it's, you know, I'm not going to read it, but it goes through and it says, you know, and to some are given this and some are given that and, you know, uh, and it starts talking about many members but one body and all this kind of stuff. And it all sounds great until it gets into, no, no. Everybody listen carefully to this. This is the scripture. I'm not going to, I don't have time to read the whole thing. It all sounds great about all the functioning until different ones start dividing against one another and saying, well, you know, because I am this, then I'm important. And because another one says, well, because I'm not that doing that, I'm not functioning like that, I'm not important. And there's all this division that rises out of functioning when it's not Christ. Can I get amen on somebody? <laughs> Junk starts coming up. People, jealousies and things start happening. And, you know, and especially when we're all supposed to quote unquote function. But, you know, I could see a lamb right in the middle of that not opening its mouth and not functioning and being looked, you know, and someone might say, well, you know, you need to do something. We need, to, we need to not do something. We need to let it be Christ. And then he'll do it. And then the Father will get the glory from that. Amen? I mean, more vocal on this side. Are you guys okay with this? Or do I need to, do I need to soften this a little bit? <laughs> um, so, so that's the one chapter that really gives itself to functioning um, but what's going on in the body what's going on in that chapter you have divisions over function because it's not Christ formed in them because it's it's almost like okay picture one of those names we read in the genealogy and they're supposed to be the generation of Jesus Christ but instead they're their own generation and they step out of that genealogy in Matthew 1 and they begin to function for God, they're not bringing forth Christ. So they're not even going to be mentioned in there because that's the purpose. That's always the purpose. Okay, so, um, and you know, human nature, whether it's Christian or not, can I say that? <laughs> human nature, whether it's Christian or not, wants a better function. Or wants a better position. It's all mentioned there in, in 1 Corinthians 12. Something I want something better. You know, I want to be more for Jesus. Would you be willing to be less for Jesus? You know? And would you would you be willing to not function if that's what the Lord said? You know, to not uh, to not give your input if that's what the Lord is in you, if that's what the Lord is in you. Because I guess really I, I shouldn't have worded that if that's what the Lord said because we're talking about a life. We're talking about being of the generation of Christ, which is different than being spirit-led where the spirit tells you to go do something or doesn't tell or tells you not to. This is led by the life and nature of of Christ that may find it more of God to step back and let others do this or let someone else or someone who's less qualified than you. Because see, we, a lot of times don't we, don't we connect uh, qualifications and functions together? But that's being of another generation. That is choosing another generation. That is choosing not to, to be of the generation of Jesus Christ, not to be of that line that, da, 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 that brought forth Christ, all of those names, and they are there with one glorious statement. We were each here to bring forth Christ. That's the body of Christ. That's the body of Christ. All right, so let me, <laughs> let me read one, well, let's see, 
several verses out of 1 Corinthians 12, all right? I'll be reading starting in verse 27 to the end. Okay, so this is after all the functions, and this is after all of the positions and, and positioning. <laughs> all the positions and positioning, and all the gifts and the division that they can cause. Okay? Verse 27, this is 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now we are the body of Christ and members in particular. Amen. Can I get an amen for that? Yeah. Glory to God. Read on, brothers and sisters. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing. Why is he saying this? He's saying because you're fighting over all this stuff. Are you, is everybody supposed to be this? <laughs> um, have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. What was that last sign you held up? I can't remember. Five? Okay. We're at four right now. We're at four right now. He's just spent all of that time talking about function and position and being the body of Christ in, in terms of that. Uh, I, like, I like the way Paul describes his definition of the body of Christ. That it is, Christ, what is the exact wordings? It is the body of Christ, him that filleth all in all. Fullness, fullness of him. The fullness of him. Yes. You know, some churches are full of us. You know, I mean, you know. Yeah, instead of the fullness of him. And it's a heart condition, isn't it? It really, it really goes to the core of your being that says, I want Jesus more than I want me. I want, I want the Father glorified with his Son more than I want me. All right, so, um, so it says, the, the last verse was, so I show unto you, uh, a more excellent way and then it leads into where 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 13 wow that's that's weird did, did y'all know that it was like from 12 to 13 it was quite the jump and so now he's going to tell us a better way okay now he's going to go he spells all this out he goes, there's this and there's diversities of gifts and there's uh, this right here and the spirit does this and da 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 and it's all outlined and he says but you know and then he says but this is look this is the way the body has been responding to this and then he says it's all there it's all true but the functioning is supposed to be by the life and nature of another because if it's not it's chaos it's going to end up badly badly <laughs> it's got to. Okay. So, um, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about what? Well, if I have, you know, because he just said, are there prophets? Are there da 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 da? Didn't he just say that in chapter 12? And there's prophecies, and he talks about prophecy and stuff. And he says, but if you know all prophecies, and you can prophesy it, all this, so you can do miracles and move mountains and have not the nature that is God. God is love, and he describes it as putting others first and not being puffed up and not trying to find position. Isn't that crazy? It's literally undoing what he just said in chapter 12 unless you understand it in light of this is the more excellent way. The other is fine. It's of God. But you, you do realize that being of God doesn't necessarily include God in it. You can, I'm of God. Well, good. Is Christ in you? No, he's not. But, but you know, I'm, 
<laughs> but I'm serious. <laughs> um, so I guess we got one minute left, right? Okay. Um, let me let me leave with this before we move to the next class, and that is at the end of 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about this happening. When the perfect appears, when that which is perfect, when the perfect appears. So, did that whet your appetite for the next yes. 20 minutes? Okay. Let's take a break. Oh, yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs>